And this is going to come from experience. I can't teach this or anything like that. It's going to come from experience. I'm going to obviously do my continuity checks to confirm that the cables that I found are the right ones. But other than that, it's just a case of the more you do it, the more you sort of suss out what's what. So... Good evening, everybody. How are we all doing? Hopefully, you've all had a good weekend. Weather's been a bit on and off. I mean, I'm recording this on a Saturday night. I don't know what Sunday's going to bring, but hopefully, it's a little bit better than it was today. Let's see. It's been a manic week for me. So, Monday, we had the protest in central London for the preventing the. I always get this tongue tied preventing or banning the sale of stolen power tools or tools in general at car boot sales. So there was about 200 odd vans, probably more actually, that rocked up to Parliament Square on Monday. Grid locked it just to, for a few hours in the afternoon just to sort of make a stand and try and get a message across. And it does seem to be working uh, because Schweb, the gas expert who organized this whole thing, hats off to him. You know, he's taken a lot of time out of his personal life and working life to get this organized. He's done a fantastic job and it is actually making waves now because if you follow me and some of the other guys on Instagram and Facebook um, and other social media channels, you'll see that car boot sale organizers are now actually starting to ban the sale of stolen power tools. So there's loads of them who are putting up notices saying that unless the people who are selling them have got proof of purchase, or they can provide the details to the people that they're selling them to in case of any repercussions later on down the line, you're not allowed to sell them, which is great because it means that it's not going to stop. Like, let's say if you're, you know, you're retired and you just want to get rid of, let's be honest, who actually gets rid of the power tools? Who does? Even when I bought a new impact driver and combi drill, I gave my old set to my dad. I didn't try to sell it for anything. And most of us, we wouldn't really get rid of our power tools. We would keep them until they break. And when they break, you, what are you going to do? You're going to try and get them refurbed and sell them? No, you're going to chuck them away and probably buy a new pair. Or you're going to get them repaired and keep it for yourself. So when I hear people saying, oh, yeah, but people might just be wanting to sell. Yes, there might be genuine cases. But if you're there and you've got a whole layout of different power tools, different brands, there's no way that there's, they are not stolen. There's no way that you're on. Most people, they will stick to one brand of power tool. For me, I'm DeWalt. Every, majority DeWalt. I've got a few other. I think I've got Milwaukee. I've got the Milwaukee pipe cutter and my press gun. That's a Nova press, which is basically using Milwaukee batteries. So those are like the two variations that I've got. But majority of my stuff is one branded power tool. And that's what someone would have. So Let's say if someone was completely going out of the game or let's say they were leaving the country and they just didn't need the power tools anymore, then you can imagine someone selling them. But then you wouldn't probably sell them at a car boot sale because you know what power tools are worth and you know you're not going to get the right money for them at a car boot sale. So you probably try and sell them to other tradespeople, firstly people that you know, or you might put it up on your social media channel saying, right, I'm moving country or I'm just completely coming out of the game. I've got a whole set of either Dewalt or Makita, Milwaukee, whatever brand you use. I want X amount for the whole lot or I want this amount for each one. You're not going to sell it for 10p on the pound. So, yeah, I, there have been a lot of negative comments about it, which, you know what, if people, we're going to get this regardless. But the people who know about it, you know about it. So, yeah, it, it's a shame that the petition got pulled because obviously the election and everything. But... I think it's gone dormant, but it's not completely inactive. I think it becomes reactivated again once a new government is formed or whatever. I'm not too hot on politics. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I think that's what I've heard. So yeah, that was on Monday, which was great. Then Friday, yesterday, obviously for you guys two days ago, mm -hmm. uh, was my sister's registry wedding. So that was another busy day. So I only really worked three days this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and yeah. Sister's wedding went really well. It was just close family, as in immediate family. So my side and her, well, her now husband's side, 
So yeah, it was a nice uh, intimate ceremony. I uh, went out for a nice meal afterwards. Had to uh, dress up as James Bond, but I'm James Bond. But yeah, uh, the actual wedding, the um, Indian wedding is in Portugal, which we're going to be going to in a couple of weeks times. Uh, yeah, I think it's in a couple of weeks. You know, so when you're self-employed, you just lose track of what day of the week it is, what month of the year it is, and so on and so forth. But So I've got a few busy weeks towards the end of the month, and we'll see how much content I can get out. But this video is, uh, what have we got in this video? I've been waffling on so much, I apologize for that. Let's just keep it brief. I can't remember what I put in this video, but there's some fault finding in it. There's some breakdowns in it. I'll let you get on and enjoy the video, and I will see you on the next one. Have a good weekend. Okay, so this job I've got to investigate some wiring. Basically, there's no permanent live feed to the boiler and the condensed pump. So what's happened previously is the boiler's obviously been condensing or whatever, and then even when it's stopped, when the demand stops, it kills the power to the boiler, but there's still condense dripping into the, the condensed pump, and then it's overflowing, and then it's obviously making things wet here. So I need to basically find out there's a small wiring center here, and then there's another wiring center in here, uh, there. So what's happening is the boiler only comes on, and when I say it only comes on, I mean power-wise, because it's a valent, it's meant to have a permanent life supply anyway, so you can always see a display on it, but that only comes on when you put a demand on. So the way they've wired it, it looks like the switch live is wired into the permanent live. So that's when the boiler comes on. And because of that, the condensed pump will only come on when there's a demand as well. See, so what happened there just now? Right, right, let's have a look. So there's a demand on there at the moment. That sounds a bit airy, but anyway, that's it. That, actually, that pump sounds like it's on its way out as well. Um, but right, look, so at the moment, you can see we've got a display there. Now, I'm going to go and turn the demand off from, where's our programmer? Programmer's here. So if I was to turn demand off, see, it just gives the power to the boiler completely it doesn't allow it to do a pump over on either and the condensed pump dies as well so yeah my job here is to investigate the two wiring centers try and bring a permanent live feed over here and then rewire the switch lives into the switch lives rewire the pump into the pump over on on the boiler and so on and so forth so i don't actually know where i'm going to start Probably just start by taking the case off the boiler, open up this wiring center, open up the wiring center in there. And with all demands off, but the power on, I want to see if there is a permanent live feed here or where I can pick one up from from there if there's a spare cable here. So I just hope this microphone isn't just touching against my neck and all this is going to sound like <laughs> we don't want to hear that. So yeah, let's keep the power on keep the demands off and then see where we've got power and where we haven't. So with the PCB out or open, I can see Well, you guys should be able to see as well. So there's a link between number four and live. So that's a permanent live feed. And obviously, so it looks like the pump is wired in to the pump live feeds or whatever it needs to be. But obviously that's not coming on. Oh, that's going off because as soon as the power dies, so that's uh, my knee pad rubbing against it, not what else you think it might be. But that's getting the power to basically everything that the boiler should be controlling because when that dies, that kills the power to there. So I basically need to find, all this seems to be okay. I need to find a live feed to bring to here, from here or from back there. I mean, worst case, there's a couple of plug sockets here so if they're active, I know it's not ideal, but it might just be a workaround to get a permanent life supply here. But ideally, I want to try and see if I can get it from that wiring center from into this wiring center, because that way we know that everything is working off of just one power supply rather than individual power supplies. I think that should be live because 
that there's a bit of twin and earth coming off of there. Where's that actually going to though? That is running around. Yeah, it's going around. I mean, I know this is not the surefire way of testing it, but just to quickly see. So, right, so we've got power there. So worst case, I'll have to wire the boiler into a three pin plug there and then wire the condensed pump into it. But let's see if we can do it the right way first. Now, in this little wiring center, obviously we know what our earth is. Now this neutral here in terminal two, that's not going to anything. So that looks like that might be a spare because this black is our neutral because that's linked into the neutral here, which is the neutral coming to the boiler. And it's also linked to the neutral on the condensed pump cable, the power cable and the condensed pump. The red is our switch live. So that's also giving a permanent live feed when it comes on to the condensed pump, which is the incorrect part of it. And it's also interrupting the switch live to the boiler. So when if the condensed pump fails, that's meant to cut this off kill the power to that and then stop the boiler from firing so I need to find out if this blue wire here is a spare then I can utilize that as a permanent live and then if I can utilize that as a permanent live I can run another cable from here to there to give the boiler permanent live supply and also move this brown here over into here to give the condensed pump a permanent life supply as well. That's the theory. Let's see if I can use that cable as a spare. If I can, happy days. Right, that didn't take me too long to find it. So, and this is going to come from experience. I can't teach this or anything. Like that. It's going to come from experience. I'm going to obviously do my continuity checks to confirm that the cables that I found are the right ones but other than that it's just a case of the more you do it the more you sort of suss out what's what so in this wiring center that's being fed off of this plug which is a bit anyway that's not that's not what I'm here to do that's the main power supply to the wiring center we then have one two three other cables coming out of it this cable if you follow it up that's going to the programmer out there there's another cable coming out of there going to the room stat so we know it's not going to be any of this follow these two cables now the outer cable here that's going down 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 cylinder stat so we know it's not this outer cable now by process of elimination there's this cable here which is literally just going there and then running into there so i'm with, i'm making an assumption i am going to test it but i'm making an assumption that that's the cable that's going to the boiler there and because we've got five cores i've also found that if i it's that cable there and i traced these two and that's a blue and a yellow which are just been snipped off here and if you come over here you'll also see and i didn't notice this earlier but not only is there a blue which is a spare but there's a yellow which is a spare as well so i am going to obviously do a continuity check to make sure that that is the case but i'm pretty confident that is the case because it's the same color wires it's the same color strands but let's do a continuity check for peace of mind and if that's the case i've got my permanent live feed so let's crack on okay so i've just joined these two wires together in a way go and over here now I'm going to do a continuity check. So one probe on the yellow terminal, another one on the blue. There we go. Got a bleep. Now I'm going to go and disconnect one of the Wagos. So let's just take the yellow out or the blue. It doesn't really matter which one. Right. And now over here, I shouldn't have any more continuity
there we go. That's dead. Open line. Okay, so we have a choice now. We've got two wires that we can actually, two spare wires that we can use to bring a permanent live feed over, which is great. So yeah, I'll probably just use the yellow just to be on the safe side because obviously blue is a neutral or can be a mistake for neutral. I've got some brown sleeving in the van as well. So I'll go and grab some brown, the brown, brown sleeving, some more cable as well. So I need to run a new feed for there. And then, yeah, everything here is fine. I just need to move the permanent live from the condensed pump over to the yellow. And then I need to run a new cable from here to there. And that'll be our permanent live for all that. And then everything else will work as normal on the switches. Okay, so I've changed the wire around a little bit. Remember I had a red wire there as well, which was currently being used as a switch live. So that was in there with the oranges. So I've moved that red which was this one here, in with the permanent lives. And now I'm using the yellow strand as my switch live. Yeah. Now let's go over to here. And what I've done is in this little wiring center, I know it might be a bit congested to try and see what's going on, but what I've done is that red is now a permanent live feed. So that permanent live feed is powering the condensed pump now i've also run i took out the old three core cable and just run a new five core to the boiler so now we've also got this brown which is our permanent live there obviously neutral and earth i've done neutral and earth as normal and then the switch live cable which is that yellow one now that's the gray strand out of the five core that's going into there so now i'm going to close this all up put the power on and then we should see the boiler come on but with no demand, but it should be on standby and there should also be power going to the pump. Right, I'm going to leave the camera here and we're going to put the power on just so we can see the boiler power up without any demand. And the condensed pump is running as well. Condensed pump just ran as well. Boilers come on, which is good. So what status is it in S98? So yeah, so there's no demand on at the moment. So it's basically just sending some power to the pump just to do a bit of pump over on. And then that pump should go off in a minute. And then we'll test it with the demands on and off. Because right now there's no demand on, but we've got power to the boiler, we've got power to the pump. So that means that's all working now. There you go. Pump's gone off. Pump over on's gone off. So that is all good. Right. Oh, no, that's all right. So I've got a compact on this. No heating or hot water. Tenant saying that it's come up with EA227. So first thing I do, I check the gas meter and gas meter's on. There's gas there. So that's all fine. Let's give it a demand. Ah, straight away. I can hear it. Don't know if it picks up on the mic, the bubbling sound. That is block condens. Let's get it unblocked and we're out of here. Right, clear out the condens trap up there. Followed that condens run down into the kitchen sink. And yeah, that's where it's all blocked up in there. So I need to try and clear that out now. And then also clear out what's in there as well. Okay, we are back in business. Don't know if you can see from there. But what I have suggested is if it does happen again, basically get rid of that G clamp and put an inch and a half T with a reducer to overflow. And that way there should be no restriction because the hole in there is quite small as well, which is why it's getting blocked up. So yeah, if it happens again, I'll just come back, price it up to cut this bit out, put an uh, inch and a half T in and then condense straight into there. So then there shouldn't be any issues with it getting blocked up.